Sagittarius, 2024 is a year that you are taking charge over your life, over your happiness, over your fun, over your creativity, and for a lot of you, over your love life too. Hi, uh, my name is Haley Comet, and welcome to my Cosmic Corner of the Internet, where we discuss all things astrology and today, all things Sagittarius in the year 2024. What are the major themes and influences that you can expect within your year ahead? And furthermore, how can you co-create with these transits in order to navigate 2024 with maximum magic and alignment? If you are new to my channel, if you are new to my work, hello, my name is Haley Comet. Wonderful to meet you. And I want to let you know that a central guiding why within everything that I create is how to leverage astrology as a tool. So as I deliver your forecast, I will be straight up with you. I know my Sagittarians appreciate honesty. I will be honest and direct about the challenges that you are moving into within the year ahead. But my aim of this video is never to fear monger. It's never to make you feel dejected and be like, can we just skip to 2025? But rather lean into these influences to see what they are trying to teach you in the school of life. So think of this video as essentially your study guide for how to ace the test within the university of life. So this video is part of my brand new series called The 12 Days of Cosmos, where I'm taking a sign-by-sign -sign look at 2024 and really tuning into the major themes that every sign can expect. And as we know, you are more than your sun sign. So definitely within the series, you'll want to tune into your rising. That will be the most accurate for what it is that you're moving through, as well as your sun sign, as I do use solar houses. And a lot of the techniques that I use to derive the themes are from houses. You you are welcome to listen to your moon, to your Mercury, to your Venus, to your Mars, to your personal placements to see what themes are coming up as well as sometimes I do talk about certain aspects that these signs will experience, but for sure, make sure to listen to your rising sign and your sun signs. And if you're like, Haley, comment, but my sun sign is Taurus, my rising sign is Aries, what have you, I am going backwards in order. So within 12 days of cosmos, we started with Pisces and we're going backwards in the zodiacal order, posting every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss what other signs that you have. And if you don't mind, if you gain any value from this video, if you could just drop a like, a comment, a share, send it to an archer within your universe to let the Sagittarians know what you are up against in the year 2024. I so appreciate the support. This is a brand new series for me. This is a brand new offering for me. I've never done sign-based horoscopes over on my channel. So if you do gain value from this sort of content, please let me know. And without further ado, let's take it into the Sagittarius horoscope for 2024, work and play. So in getting you acquainted with the astrology for Sagittarius's 2024, we are essentially pulling a defining transit, a transit that when you look back at the year can be a theme that you definitely felt. We'll talk about your ruler in a moment. That's another really important energetic to get tuned into. But firstly, I want to draw our awareness to a planet that a lot of times, especially when you're Jupiter ruled, such as yourself, we want to ignore which is Saturn. I am here to report that Saturn in Pisces is a defining transit for your 2024 because from a house perspective, it's transiting an angular house and it does square off with your ruler this year. So let's get acquainted. What does it mean to be rocking with Saturn? What it means to be rocking with Saturn is that things that you used to get away with, you're not necessarily getting away with any longer. And the thing about being a Sagittarius is that you are a very lucky sign. It doesn't mean that you don't go through challenges, but you do have this optimistic lease on life. And typically a lot of things do work out. You navigate life with a lot of faith around where it is that you are going. Now, that's important to lean on, that's important to keep alive within your mind and soul. But what I want to say is that if there has been a tendency to run away from your problems, book a flight, rather than feel the feelings or enroll in this new course when you're going through a breakup or ignore what happened in your past because you're distracted by this new creative endeavor. I'm just saying that typically is a coping strategy for Sagittarius energy. And I'm letting you know this year, you may not feel like you are able to really run from it. 
or really escape it. You are being asked to face it. And by it, I mean your emotions. I mean your upbringing. I mean your roots. I mean your lineage. And before you click away, you're like, Haley, this doesn't sound like any fun at all. I want a different 2024. I want to jump to 2025. Listen, a lot of you are going to have a very fun year. You have North Node transiting fifth house. A lot of you are going to fall in love. You have Jupiter entering the seventh. We'll talk about these themes, but I need to firstly give you a lay of the land by letting you know with Saturn transiting essentially the fourth house in houses or solar houses, this is a very foundational year to really look at how it is that you cope and how it is that you process because the typical way that you process and feel your feelings is typically through a certain sensation of escapism booking a flight rather than feeling it, going to this party rather than feeling it. And I'm just letting you know, Saturn transiting Pisces is really making you look at your emotions. Look at everything that has contributed to make you cope in the ways that you do and the gift of it, because Saturn, it might be kind of mean, <laughs> but it's not mean for no reason. It makes us go to the gym. It makes us get our push-ups in. It makes us get our bicep curls in so that we are a stronger soul. So if you lean into the Saturn in Pisces in the fourth house by really confronting your feelings, by really looking at how have I been coping? How have I been genuinely taking care of myself? Because when Saturn's transiting this sector of the chart, this does not have to do with what other people see of us. This is everything that had to come into alignment for us to get to this place. It has to do with roots, has to do with essentially generational cycles, and it also has to do with private matters that people are not privy to, your emotions and how it is that you cope and deal with them. So with Saturn pressurizing this sector of your chart, there might be a lot going on with you, but you're not not necessarily as inclined to want to share it. You are keeping certain things private and the universe is really guiding you to look at these arenas of your life, much of which can be easy to ignore, right? And with Saturn there, you're not going to find that it's as easy to ignore or hit a snooze button around these emotions that want to be felt, this grief that wants to be shed from your body, these ways of regulating and processing your emotions that you are ready to release. And like I highlighted, fourth house has to do with our roots and generational cycles. So for some of you, you could even be having to look face to face at certain decisions that you have made for your life and how that has essentially been echoed from generation to generation within you around, oh, it makes sense that these are the sort of people that I date because this is what was modeled to me within my family home. Oh, it makes sense that this is a certain escapism route that I have because it was what was modeled to me or what runs in my DNA. With Saturn transiting Pisces in this sector, you might need to kind of confront these themes. And again, you're not defined by where it is that you come from. You're not defined by your past. You're not defined by your roots. But with Saturn transiting here, it's almost this energy around wanting to take charge of this arena, really wanting to gain awareness around how these generational cycles have played out and echoed out within your physical reality. Some themes that might be particularly potent in this arena is really around essentially substances with it in Pisces, any sort of drinking, if that's something that you've leaned on to cope and you've observed that ricochet through your family line, that is something that is very genetic. That can be something that you are looking at and really wanting to get clear around where this behavior is coming from. If you want to be the one to stop this cycle, another theme could be the energy of Pisces, which is wanting to save people, sort of being something that is very dominant within your family family structures, or even spiritual themes, escapism themes, there might just be this energy around observing and really wanting to take charge around, hey, I see I'm dating the same kind of people I saw my mom date. Hey, I notice I'm dealing with my problems the same way that I saw my dad deal with my problems. Hey, I'm noticing that all of the stories that grandma would tell me about grandpa, that is how I'm describing who it is that I'm dating currently. You'll notice I'm weaving in a lot of romantic themes because like I said, there is an emphasis on romance this year. And I think with Saturn in the fourth house, it's just really wanting you to get clear on why you are drawn to what it is that you are drawn to. Because for some of you watching this, you might have had amazing, essentially, familial examples and have these incredible generational cycles that are playing out. But for others of you, I just see this energy with Saturn transiting here. You're really observing, like, if our family line keeps doing what we've been doing, we're going to keep 
getting what it is that we've been getting. And perhaps you're feeling called that you're like, I want to break this cycle. I want to be intentional about breaking this cycle. I do not want to repeat the same mistakes or styles of coping or outsourcing our power, trying to save other people. I don't want to repeat that, no thank you. So for some of you, you're really getting clear on all of the essentially generational or familial influences that you had in order to get clear around who it is that you want to genuinely partner with. And if you grew up in an amazing, essentially family home, it could be an energy around, these are traditions that are very important to me and that's gonna echo within the partner that I choose. Like I want somebody who my family will be proud of, who will maintain essentially the legacy that has been continued on. But if you're observing like, hey, there are certain patterns within my family that I'm observing within my dating life and the partners that I'm choosing to connect with, cancel, cancel. And for some of you who are married or in a committed partnership with Saturn and Pisces within the fourth house, the same sentiment remains. It's not necessarily about choosing a partner, you've already chose a partner, but just getting clear on the ways that you are dealing with your emotions within this connection, if it is healthy, if you are brushing too many things under the rug, if you are escaping from your problems in an effort to want to, whether it's just keep the peace or have fun or live in a day, dream or what have you, you're having to get really clear. And for some of you, perhaps even breaking certain patterns, some of which sure might be yours, but I also want to bring to the surface, this might be an important year to really get clear around your family history, your lineage, and how you can be essentially acting out some of those patterns unknowingly or subconsciously. Again, this manifests in beautiful ways as well. Like I think a lot of times when we talk about this, we talk about generational trauma, but there's also this concept around essentially generational dreams, right? And so maybe with the energy of Saturn and Pisces, you are fulfilling and living out dreams that your family members did not get the ability to do. I think that's something that's so special. I think that's the point of procreating and of having Having children, having a family line is that we aim for every generation to do better than the one prior. And so with Saturn and Pisces within the fourth house, maybe there are certain dreams that you're observing, like, hey, this was a sacrifice that my parents weren't able to have, and that's why I'm gonna be so intentional around really seizing this opportunity to bring my dream to life or what have you. Because when we talk about fourth house, it's like it's in our DNA. Sometimes things are explicitly said around certain patterns or dreams or aspirations that certain people had, and others, it's ingrained within us, right? Which is why it's important to take ownership and responsibility of it. A quick story I just want to share to illuminate this concept. So I never knew my grandpa. He passed away when my dad was very young and I moved to San Diego. I don't know why. I just always felt really drawn to San Diego. I really wanted to live here and I didn't know where exactly that desire came from. When I told my grandma that I was moving to San Diego, she almost got emotional because she told me that that was my grandma dream. That was why they moved, was to try to move to San Diego. It didn't work. They couldn't financially cover it. Like they had to live with somebody else elsewhere. So they never got to San Diego. But my grandma told me she was like, that was a dream of his. And again, it was like something just natural within me. I always felt drawn to San Diego. And it's like, I did it. I live here. And I think sometimes when you essentially do something on behalf of your generational lineage, whether it's fulfilling a dream or breaking a cycle, to a certain degree, you either make that dream happen for everyone who came prior or you break that cycle for everyone who came prior and that's a powerful thing to do. So here I am just starting your 2024 horoscope like you know, you're breaking generational cycles, no sweat, <laughs> no pressure whatsoever. But that can be a theme that is coming up. Now, other themes that could be highlighted. With Saturn transiting fourth house, there can be pressures around your family. You may have to be stepping up for your family in a bigger way. You may have to start caretaking for people within your family. Some of you may be having to have boundaries. Like again, sometimes with Pisces here, there could be a tendency to just be like, okay, whatever, whatever whatever, I'll give them another chance, I'll give them another chance. And for some of you with Saturn and Pisces transiting here, you're really getting clear this year around, no, I'm not, I'm not going to tolerate this any longer. I have to be able to see this clearly because part of Saturn and Pisces can be this tendency to want to live in a dream, to believe that they'll change this, this time or to not let go of that dream around having this family member who treats you in the ways that you deserve and the ways that you hear everybody else gets treated by their family member. Like that can be hard to look reality clearly and just say in the ways that you are showing up, 
within my physical reality. Like I can't allow the disrespect any longer. So that could be a theme that is echoing within your universe this year. Some of you could be stepping up more so within your family. North node's in the fifth house and Saturn is in Pisces in the fourth. So some of you might conceive, okay, if you've been wanting to, some of you might have a baby, okay. With Saturn in the fourth house, there can be essentially a, a theme around that as well. That could be part of what it is that you are feeling. I also wanna share that fourth house has to do with our physical residence, our home. Yes, it has to do with the home of our soul, how it is that we regulate and manage our emotions. And again, with Saturn, they're having to get very clear, having to look at them very essentially directly, which as a Jupiter world love, is not typically the zone that you like to be in, okay? But with Saturn transiting fourth house, there can be certain responsibilities that you are being asked to essentially maintain around your physical residence. I will share, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I will let you know, with Saturn transiting the fourth house, I felt like I could not get on top of my home maintenance. It was like I would fix one thing and then something else would break. I just felt like that entire transit, I was just constantly in the middle of a home project, something was constantly breaking, something was constantly had to be fixed or improved. It really helped me step up and take ownership and responsibility over my home. I had shared on my weekly horoscope series, Magic Monday, I'd shared a story recently where I was looking for all of these roommates and it was a lot of stress and it was really time consuming. I really had to step up and really be the one who was managing and maintaining this home. It put a lot of pressure on me to be the one who was maintaining the home, fixing things, making sure that I had roommates. And honestly, when it comes to Saturn energy, Saturn is the planet of time, hard work. So things took more time. Maintenance took more time. Finding roommates took more time. Things were more strenuous. But what I will say about Saturn is that Saturn, yes, tests you, but you get to the other side with so much more strength honestly, because when we think about fourth house, this is the very bottom of the chart, right? Either houses or solar houses. And when we talk about essentially Saturn transiting this sector, this is very foundational. From here on out, Saturn will begin to climb up the chart into your public essentially persona and legacy and all of the things. So you are starting a new cycle and I will let you know a gift of coming out of the other side of Saturn transiting my fourth house is that I really had this new new level of awareness of what it took to maintain my home. Like I learned how to fix so many things. I learned how to deal with certain problems that came up around this place. Like there really was this unshakable energy within me because I had to do the work. I had to learn how to fix things. I had to learn how to maintain a home. I had to learn all of these things by hard work and investing effort into it. So I'll be totally forthright navigating through. It wasn't the most pleasant, <laughs> but you do learn and you you do have mastery waiting you on the other side. So some of you could be dealing with more home renovations. If you do need to move, sometimes Saturn in the fourth house can be pressures around basically moving and with the energy of Saturn, your home search, your apartment search, your condo search, your townhome search, it might take longer than you would imagine. Okay, with the energy of Saturn, there might be certain restrictions or certain blockages. Some of you could be downsizing, moving somewhere smaller. Like I said, moving in with family to help take care can also be a theme here that's coming up around home. Some of you may experience some restrictions around essentially landlords or roommates or things of that nature. And again, the thing about Saturn is taking responsibility. Like I could have just moaned that entire transit and just let everything fall into disarray, let everything break, but you have to take responsibility over your home around. If I want it to be nice, I have to invest effort to make it nice. If I want a peaceful living situation with my roommates, I need to invest effort to make it nice. If I want to be at peace with my family members, I need to put effort to create that peace or to enact those boundaries, whatever it is that is coming up for you. And with fourth house being not only just our physical residence, but also the home of our soul, you are taking responsibility over your happiness and over your emotions. And again, I'll be completely forthright. This was one of the more challenging transits that I've personally experienced. I never felt so alone in my life because that theme around having to take responsibility and fix things, that also was showing up with my emotional state. And I really just had this awareness during that time around, oh, no one's coming to save me. No one's coming to save me because like I said, a lot of you are falling in love this year. And for some of you, 
why love and relationships have been evading you is that you've been waiting for someone to save you, to whisk you away from your problems so you don't have to deal with things, so you don't have to fix things. And this year, if you really get clear, if you really learn how to take care of yourself, I really feel like the universe will reward you with someone who is destined to walk alongside with you as a life partner, as a business partner, what have you. There's a lot of magnetism coming in around relationships. We'll talk about that. But what I want to say is that you have to take responsibility over your emotional state. You have to take responsibility over also your mental health to be totally forthright. Pluto this year will be dipping into the sector of your chart that governs the mind briefly, okay? And so there can be this energy around really needing to take ownership and, and understanding that no one's coming to save you, which for me when I was navigating this transit was so depressing because I was like, dang, I really am the only one who cares. Like, dang, I have to be the one who picks myself up when I fall, who wipes my tears. Like, dang, this is me. And like I said, it was it was pretty lonely and I felt like I had to deal with a lot of my emotional struggles on my own. But like I said, the other side, I had this mastery where no one could really mess with me because I knew that I had me and I wasn't scared of solitude any longer. I wasn't scared of being on my own because I'd learned all of these tools to regulate and to care for myself. Again, Saturn is where it is that we are doing our push-ups. So invest energy into figuring out your emotional rhythms and how it is that you can genuinely soothe yourself. I highlighted this earlier, but Pisces does have to deal with escapism themes and your Jupiter rolled and your Sagittarius. So sometimes there could be echoes of that. And I just want to say, really be intentional about putting in your essentially bicep curls or push-ups around something that makes you feel connected with spirit. I really see this as going to be a year of seeking because Pisces is where it is that we connect to something bigger. And yes, we can try to find that energy via drinking and substances and partying, trying to escape from it. But I really see with this energy, you can lean of this transit by really being intentional around doing the things that soothe your emotional state. And one thing I think is going to be super soothing for you is having a really strong spiritual practice, meditating, having your altar, having modalities that help you feel connected to the bigger picture, constructive escapism. Okay. Understanding you are not alone. I know a lot of times Saturn in the fourth house can make you feel alone. It can make you feel quite isolated, but understanding there's also this entry point to connect deeper into spirit to kind of like hermit in order to really deeply connect and to really feel at home within your soul is really the ask here. But like I said, it's not always the easiest transit to deal with. And the souls who will feel this Saturn energy punctuated the most are those who have Sagittarius placements between three to 19 degrees. If you have Sagittarius placements between three to 19 degrees, that means Saturn who will transit three to 19 degrees Pisces in the year 2024 will square your Sagittarius placements, accentuating these Saturn themes, which again, Saturn is about restriction and limitation. This is not a time for escapism. This is not a time to try to run away from the law. This is not a time to allow bad habits and vices that have to do with avoiding or neglecting reality to run rampant. It's a time to play within the realm of reality, seeing your emotions clearly, seeing your home clearly, and really seeing your ultimate fulfillment clearly. I equally want to add, you will definitely feel the themes that I'm highlighting around home and generational cycles and emotional state. If you notice, when you look at your circle chart, look towards the bottom, you'll see two letters. It says, I see. It'll always be opposite the MC. MC is midheaven, which has to do with career public persona. I see is the most sacred, essentially, portion of the chart it has to do with home, family, emotional state. For a lot of Sagittarius risings, you will have your IC in the sign Pisces. Not all. If you're just a Sagittarius sun, you most likely do not. But if you notice that you have IC in Pisces, particularly through three to 19 degrees, Saturn will conjoin your IC this year, really emphasizing a lot of these themes. So I just want to highlight that to you. And so we will be talking more about Saturn as it does square off with your ruler, but let's go ahead and dive into 2024. What is your ruler doing? So why do we ask what your ruler is doing? So if we understand where your ruling planet is transiting, we can really tune into some other big picture themes. I know you guys love the big picture that you are navigating. So firstly, from when the year begins to May 25th, 
your ruling planet, Jupiter, will transit Taurus. So the first portion of the year may be marked by some Taurus themes, which is really wanting to dial into your physical, essentially, reality. What it is that you can see and touch and taste and smell? Some of you are leveraging Saturn transiting the fourth house and your ruling planet transiting Taurus around up-leveling your home, like your furniture. You're really wanting to take better care of yourself. You're wanting to invest in, whether it's like skincare, facial steamers, things around the home that just allow you to live your inner boosh lifestyle. Like some of you are really on your boosh vibe this year, honestly, with Jupiter transiting Taurus. And beyond just bougie just for its own sake, it feels like things that are helping your emotional state is the focus. You are investing in things that do improve, whether it's your physical health, whether it's your happiness, you're wanting to be surrounded by more beauty and more luxury and more comfort, and you're willing to invest in what is going to generally make you happy. It's really an aim here. And when Jupiter is in Taurus, it will, from a house or solar house perspective, it will be transiting the sixth house, which has to do with our day to day. And so that's why I'm saying like with Jupiter in Taurus transiting here, you're really wanting to invest your time and energy towards things that are going to improve your day to day and your health. Like some of you could be investing in a Peloton. Some of you could be investing in a juicer to make celery juice. Like a lot of health themes have been coming up for Sagittarius placements simply because North Node was transiting your sixth house and Uranus is also there, which we will talk about. It will meet up with your ruler. And with your ascendant ruler here, you're really wanting to invest effort in order to improve the comfort and the enjoyment within your day to day. For example, if you've had certain dietary issues and you've just been kind of ignoring it, this might be a year in which you're like, no, let me learn about this and let me actually invest energy into improving improving my comfort within my day to day around, oh, that's why my tummy is always in knots because I wasn't supposed to be eating this. Or, oh, that's why I always get these rashes is because I'm allergic to my lotion. Like again, you are being a little bit more likely to invest in what is going to make you essentially feel your best. And a lot of that can echo out in health. Some of you can find you're in your foodie era <laughs> you're cooking more, honestly. You are really wanting to take care of your body. Some of you might be spending more money on like bouge workout classes or something in the nature. And for some of you, honestly, with your ruling planet transiting Taurus, you can be more likely to focus upon your finances. Pluto's wrapping up a journey within your second house, which could have brought some transformations around physical income and things of that nature. We'll talk about that later. But what I wanna say is this year, you can start earning more. There could be a focus on really wanting to improve your physical material reality, your everyday, and your ruling planet does grant a bit of luck where it transits. So you can find that you are extra lucky in attracting new lucrative positions, a lucrative side hustle. Some of you might be actually doing less work and really wanting to maximize time. Sometimes Jupiter can bring a freeing up of certain commitments that have not felt aligned in order for you to really focus focus on your wellness, your physical, emotional, and mental wellness is a huge aim this year. A lot of times, you know, there can be a tendency like I highlighted to, you know, book a flight to get away from it, go to this music festival to get away from it. And it's not saying that you won't do those things, certainly with North Node transiting fifth house, you're going to want to have fun, but just ensure that you are investing energy towards what is going to improve your day to day, whether that's emotional wellness, just with Saturn transiting the fourth house, as well as just your daily experience of life. Some of you might be getting a pet or you recently got a pet with Jupiter transiting here. And with Jupiter in Taurus, I wanna to bring to the surface that your ruling planet will conjoin Uranus. This happens in April. So what I wanna say is if you are going into this year and there is something in this sixth house realm around your daily routine, your work, your health, that you've been wanting to change. I'm just saying April's astrology can be the lucky break that you have been looking for to change your reality. Now, I need to be so clear that when I talk about Uranus, it's not always necessarily good surprises. Again, with not an ounce of fear mongering in my soul, sometimes Uranus can be this energy of expect the unexpected. So sometimes there can be a sudden change in job. Yes, it can lead you to your dream job, but it could be unsettling around, whoa, I just got like laid off or I just had this freelance 
freelance contract, like let me go. Or I had this weird argument with my coworker. Like it can bring unexpected events within this arena, but it can also bring unexpected gains within this arena as well. Like I said, with Uranus transiting this sector overall, a lot of you could have been dealing with weird health stuff or weird coworker stuff. And I really want you to lean into with the first portion of the year, like I am open to a miracle. And the thing is when you're open to a miracle, you have to be open to the weird ways that sometimes the universe gets you that. So if you are at a job where you're like, I hate this job, I hate this job, I hate this job. I'm just saying in April, something unexpected could happen in order for you to move towards change, okay? But if you say you're open to a miracle in order to get you in a better situation, you gotta just rock with what the universe <laughs> provides for you. Because with Jupiter or Uranus, again, there can be something unexpected, like a health outbreak that draws your awareness to this underlying health issue that has been essentially within you. Again, ultimately a net positive, having that knowledge will help you build a more healthy life but unpleasant to deal with the initial unexpected outbreak. So what I wanna say in April, expect the unexpected. Some of you could be disrupting certain fixed grooves of behavior that you're in at work. So if you are always the one to take on the extra tasks or to accommodate for your other coworker, this could be a time that you are essentially rebelling in a certain way. You could also find that you are changing up your diet around this time, trying a new exercise routine. Again, I really see with the first portion this year, a lot of Sagittarians are kind of like in their bougie era a little bit. Like you might find you are still having fun and partying, you know, with North Node in the fifth house, but you're being more intentional about where it is that you want to be and where it is that you don't want to be. Like you're getting comfortable saying no. Like just because there's work happy hour, you're like, I don't necessarily need to be there. Like you are understanding that you are exactly where you're meant to be, wherever it is that you are. You are the party, wherever it is that you are. You can have fun doing a face mask and listening to music on a Friday night, just as much fun as you would have at that party. Like wherever it is that you go, you are the party. Like that's the energetic that you are tapping into. It's like the decisions that you make, whether it's your, yes, I want to go to this concert. I'm going to go to this thing or no, I think I'm just going to like stay in and devote to self care. That is the right decision. Get really clear on your like, yes, this feels good versus no, I think I'd just rather be comfortable this evening. Like it just really feels like this year, you're not having a lot of FOMO. Like you're really being intentional about your yeses and your noes, which is nice because with essentially your center ruler transiting this sector in the beginning portion of the year, you're wanting to feel good. Okay. You're not just wanting to be all over. If you're going to feel hungover and drained, you really want to feel your best every single day. And so in May, your ruler Jupiter will sextile Neptune. Now a big piece about sextiles is they are opportunity aspects. So you don't have to work with this if you do not want to, but there is an opportunity for these planets to work together. And this can be a very magical combo. Should you lean into it? It is linking Jupiter and Taurus with Neptune in Pisces and Neptune in Pisces is most likely within the fourth house of your natal chart, which again is kind of chilling there with Saturn, which Saturn is about limitations and finite constrictions and Neptune is about make believe. So it's a really interesting juxtaposition there. But what I want to highlight is that a lot of you are really getting clear in your intuition. That's why you are getting comfortable with your yeses and with your noes because you are trusting yourself around, oh, I don't think I want to go to the party. Like you're trusting that. Maybe in other portions of your time and your life, you would have been like, oh, I got to be there. I don't want to have FOMO, but you're really trusting these like inner nudges within around, oh, I don't think I want to be there. You're getting really dialed in this year. You are, for some of you, you can be really tapped into intuition. You could be really receiving like prophetic insights or things in nature. And honestly, for some of you, you might be more sensitive. Maybe that's why you're being more intentional around where it is that you want to be and where it is that you do not want to be. What I want to say can be an aim this year is integrating new mind, body, essentially modalities that can help your emotional and spiritual wellness, such as something like yoga or integrating float tanks into your day to day, integrating hydro therapy, integrating facials, whatever helps you relax and put energy towards your healing. And furthermore, 
connect to something bigger would be my ideal <laughs> aim of something to integrate within your day to day. Because yes, you are prioritizing your physical wellness. You're really wanting to beat any illnesses or modify any sort of allergies or things that you have observed within your health. Like sure, that is a focus, your physical reality. With the sextile to Neptune in Pisces, most likely in the fourth house, you're equally wanting to invest your day to day towards things that are healing and soothing for the soul. So maybe it's a new fitness studio that you go to maybe it's a new psychic that you go to maybe it's a modality that soothes you and allows you to tap in you're devoting both to your physical as well as your emotional wellness this year so jupiter sextile neptune exacts may 23rd of 2024 so again these are two slow moving planets so you can absolutely feel it build around that time and then on may 25th your ruler enters gemini this is good and bad news for you it is good good news because now you have your ruling planet entering an angular house, particularly the angular house that has to do with relationships, connections, partnerships. The good news is you can find that you are more magnetic when it comes to the general public in the latter portion of the year. And you can also find that there are essentially benefits and payoffs as it relates to relationships. You should have multiple suitors, multiple offers. If you are single, you can, not always, we'll talk about the nuances, you can be feeling more optimistic about your connection. You could be really wanting to learn about your connection, having really lovely conversations conversations with your partner, things of that nature. Those are the upside of Jupiter and Gemini. So it is some good news. But equally, the bad news is that Jupiter is now transiting the sign of its detriment. So Jupiter does not like being in Gemini. Jupiter loves being in your sign, Sagittarius. Okay, it is right at home because Jupiter is all about morals and adventure and expansion and spirituality. And Gemini is about essentially messages and communication, things that make sense. Again, your ascendant ruler is answering to Mercury. You typically are a soul who thrives as it relates to adventure and getting closer to meaning and anticipating a new dawn. And now your ascendant ruler in the latter portion of the year is answering to Mercury, which is all around wanting to understand and make sense, which again does emphasize communication, particularly as it relates to others. So Jupiter doesn't like being in Gemini. So when you have your ruling planet in a territory it doesn't like to be in, sometimes you can find like you are challenged in new ways or you could just feel out of your comfort zone to a certain degree. Like where life school is enrolling you, you're learning a lot, okay? With Jupiter and Gemini, you are learning a lot but it might be essentially new ways of communicating within relationships that you're not used to, new ways of marketing to the general public that you're not used to, new ways of having to open up the platform for communication to go both ways that you're not used to because shadow side, love you guys so much, but shadow side of Sagittarius can sometimes be holier than thou. This is my truth. I don't need to listen to you. Like with Jupiter and Gemini, you can find a lot of your growth in the latter half of the year being able to carry the nuance around, oh, this is how you feel. This is how I feel. And being able to understand that, yes, you are quite wise. There's lots for you to share, but also being willing to hear and really hear the people within your universe. They can have a lot of lessons for use. I just want to say it does have blessings, okay, but your ruling planet is in territory it doesn't love to be in. But let's talk about more of essentially what it means to have your ruling planet transit your essentially seventh house. So from May 25th onward, you can experience more luck and gain coming in through others. This is not a time, though you are emotionally regulating and that can feel like something that you are maintaining by yourself, you can find that the latter half of the year does feel more social. You are surrounded by new contacts. You are networking more. You are more appealing for other individuals. You are experiencing a lot of your growth when you are getting out there, when you are socializing. So again, like I was saying earlier, it's not saying you're hermiting and just doing face masks the entire time, but you're just getting clear around. This is an event that I really wanna to go to. This is around people who are really inspiring versus, you know, this isn't my cup of tea and I don't necessarily need to be there. Like you really are working that discernment around where it is that you want to be because a lot of your gain and growth and blessings can be around essentially people. And yes, a lot of Sagittarians very well may fall in love this year and you might have multiple 
offers on the table. Honestly, what I want to say is with your rolling planet transiting Gemini, Gemini's the twins, there's going to be two people competing for your heart, at least two. <laughs> two people wanting to partner with you. Again, this could show up romantically. It could also show up within business partnerships or creative partnerships because North Node is transiting the fifth house. But I definitely see that you are going to be more magnetic. You're going to have more options. Okay. In the latter portion of the year, you're going to be more inspired. You're having interesting conversations about the people around you and you really are challenging your own biases around the people that you're typically drawn to and you're open like i really just feel like with jupiter transiting the sector in the sign gemini you might be dating different people that you haven't dated before because like i said with saturn trains in the fourth house some of you are getting clear on your past and your roots and your ancestry and to a certain degree with saturn squaring jupiter later this year you might see how that's echoing into your dating life now around oh that makes sense why i always am drawn to people who are unavailable or always have this vice or always do this or what have you and for some of you you're like getting out of your typical ruts like you're like why not go on this date with this electrician not my typical type but why not? Why not go on a date with this tech salesman, with this plumber and with, <laughs> I don't know why I'm just naming occupations, but think of your type. Okay, think of your type. This is a year to be open to people reaching you who are not your typical type. Like it's important to say as a big picture theme, try some new stuff this year with your ruler, meeting up with Uranus a little earlier in the year. Try some new stuff. And with Jupiter and Gemini in the seventh house, be open to learn, like really learn from the people that you are connecting with. Whether it's romantic or business partner or just like networking or customers or clients, really learn about the people that you are interacting with. Do challenge your biases if you're like oh this isn't my target demographic or oh this isn't my type like what can you learn from these connections you might surprise yourself because oftentimes when it comes to our type it's all well and good if we have these really healthy processes within but sometimes our type isn't what's best for us it's what's comfortable and sometimes what's comfortable is toxic because the toxicity is our comfort zone because that's all we've known and if you want to get out of that if there's certain grooves where you're like i can't keep doing this i can't keep dating the same kind of person over and over try to date and connect with some different people you never know what you can learn from them so i just see you might have a more busy you know social calendar in the latter half of the year and even if there's someone who's not your type okay go on a date have a conversation be open to learn about the world through their eyes. Like I learned about so many different things through the people that I've dated <laughs> over the years. Like you really get to like peek into their world and learn about whether it's their industry or their way of life or whatever it is. You get to peek into their world and there's a lot of data that you can learn. But again, don't shut yourself off from new connections and new people that you can learn from by being like, well, they're not my type. They're not my typical client. They're not my typical customer. They're not my typical date partner. Say yes. You never know. You could really learn something is what I want to say with your ruling planet transiting Gemini. Like typically Sagittarius, you are the wisest person in the room. Okay. And you still are, but all I'm saying is you're going to be surprised this year. A lot of people are going to be teaching you things that are profound. Some lessons might be more helpful than others. Okay. With your ruling planet squaring off with Saturn. But again, you're learning a lot. Like even if it wasn't a great day, you can still have that data around. Okay. I don't think I'm going to go on dates with people who exhibit that red flag or what have you like really approaching connection through this, like student mindset is really the vibe around what can I learn both about this person, but also about myself. But like if you are single, I really am of the belief that Getting to know what it is that you really want within a connection, it's a little bit like paint by numbers. Do you know paint by numbers? It's basically these little paintings where there's little numbers and there's different colors that kind of fill in the big picture. I truly do believe that everybody that we date is almost like a different color. And sometimes we have to have these different experiences in order to know the big picture of what it is that we truly want <laughs> within a connection. So don't feel like it's either a pass or a fail if you marry this person or not. Like be open to learn about yourself, about this person, about what it is that you want within connection through these lessons. Some will be pleasant, some may not be so, but again, 
you're learning. And if you're learning, you're living. Now, let's say you're in a committed partnership and you're like, Haley, I already have picked my partner. I don't need to be doing this paint number by numbers thing. I just wanna highlight Jupiter in seventh house has to do with anyone one-to-one. So again, business partners, you could be learning a lot from customers, clients, anything of that nature, the general public overall. Definitely, if you are a business owner with Jupiter and Gemini, get curious. Who is your ideal customer? What is it that they want? Send out surveys analyze the analytics. Oftentimes you are somebody who kind of moves off faith and vibes <laughs> as a Jupiter ruled individual, but this is the time to really get clear, really crunch the numbers, really, really figure out who your ideal client is. And if you are contemplating partnering with somebody else, like really leaning on this mercurial influence to really run the numbers, under understand what it is that they are about. Again, a lot of gain and growth can come to you via connections, but it is asking you with the energy of your ruler transit and mercurial sign to look to the data, to really understand the pieces. How this can affect your serious relationships is that yes, it can be a time of optimism within a connection of really observing where it is that you guys are growing together, really being able to lean on one another, really being able to be a team in some regard. There can be an emphasis upon communication, really wanting to invest energy around, okay, this is not how I would do things, but let me have this dialogue, let me learn from my partner, and to understand that just because it's not the way that I do things does not mean that it's not a valid way to do things. Like that can be something that is alive within your universe. And some of you could even be traveling with your partner, learning about something with your partner, certainly. But I also wanna let you know that even the grand benefic, even Jupiter does have a shadow side. And with this planet transiting here, some of you may observe that you are growing apart because Jupiter, your role layer, is all about growth. And some of you might be getting analytical around really wanting to break down, like, are we growing together or are we growing apart? Because this is something we don't talk about often within astrology. People think of Saturn transiting the seventh house as the breakup transit, and certainly it does make relationships hard, but Saturn is about commitment and Jupiter is about freedom. So I do tend to see a lot of my clients who have Jupiter transiting the sector, they are creating more freedom within their relationships and equally just be feeling more optimistic about the dating market. So being like, okay, I can have a breakup and find a new person right away because Jupiter does bring luck there, okay. You know, Jupiter, it's a great influence. I don't want you to navigate this transit with any fear, but I do want you to observe, am I growing together with my partner or are we growing apart? And what can I learn from this connection? I'm not saying everybody needs to give up on their relationship like with your ruler transiting Gemini invest in communication really seek to learn from the other person's point of view really seek to have your eternal student goggles on to really observe like what can we do to improve this connection right I'm not saying everybody needs to spread their wings and go elsewhere but just think critically about it is what I want to say editing Haley here I also wanted to highlight that your ruling planet Jupiter will try and Pluto in June 2024. By this point, Pluto will have entered Aquarius, and this links essentially third house of communication with seventh house of one-to-one -one partnerships. So a lot of Sagittarians can experience a transformation in how it is that they communicate within their partnerships. If you are committed, you could find you and your partner are talking about some deeper beneath the surface topics that you guys don't typically touch on, and it's leading to a lot of growth. And for some of you, you could be interacting with new sorts of people through a new interest or a new skill set or a new hobby that you are learning about that is expanding you, not just the hobby itself, but also the people that you're coming into contact by pursuing learning more on that topic or that interest. And so I do wanna highlight, pay attention to who you meet, particularly around July, okay? Because Jupiter will sextile the North Node, which is in the fifth house, which also has to do with dating. So it would be a great time to put yourself out there, okay? That's all I'm saying, July. Hot girl summer, Sagittarius, have one. <laughs> Seriously, if you are single. And the thing about fate though, is that not everybody will this be necessarily, oh my gosh, this soulmate where we run off into sunset and we're together forever. Sometimes karmic partners are teaching opportunities. And again, with your rolling planet transiting Jupiter in the latter half of 2024, you gotta be open to learn. 
You gotta be open to learn. Learn about yourself, learn about your partners, learn about what it is that you want through context of your partner. So not everybody's life lesson or people that you're connecting with at that time will be your forever, but I will say it's going to be important for your pathway forward. So definitely important to observe who it is that you meet during that time. And then in October and November of this year, Jupiter will sextile Chiron. This can be a mark of really some deep healing that is taking place at this time. And for some of you, maybe even just having this more playful approach to dating is something healing. Maybe there's been certain wounds within you or even within your inner child of abandonment or that you are not lovable or what have you. And that can be something that you are working through this year or being able to find more wisdom around or really wanting to get to the core around what about me fears abandonment this much or what makes me keep people at an arm's length. Like again, you're definitely in life school and a lot of the lessons that you're learning can be something that is quite healing for you. And I'm just really feeling into this energy that some of you are going to meet somebody, whether it's a friend, a contact, a relationship partner, what have you, but someone's gonna make your inner child feel safe. Like you're gonna really feel safe to tap into this very playful way of being, this very lighthearted, carefree state of being. Definitely pay attention to who makes you feel that sort of way because being in those sort of connections is healing for your inner child, particularly if you didn't get to feel that sensation of safety and carefree fun when you were younger. So I've discussed your ruler squaring Saturn briefly, but let's talk more about it. So in August and in December, Jupiter and Gemini will square Saturn and Pisces. So that's gonna accentuate a lot of those Saturnian themes that I was highlighting within your defining transit portion. But there's also going to be certain essentially contrasts or conflicts around the people that you are connected with and essentially your family. Like one thing that I could see coming to the surface is there could be religious or moral disagreements between someone that you are dating, your spouse, something of the nature, and your family. There can be arguments around family, around your in-laws, things of that nature. There could be tense religious or moral differences. Maybe your family doesn't approve of who it is that you're dating. Maybe your family doesn't approve that you're dating. There can be hardships there. Maybe for some of you, it's like you want to tap into this Jupiter and Gemini in the seventh house. You want to be social, but with Saturn in the fourth house, your emotional state is feeling a little bit more heavier. It's hard to kind of get out there and to tap into that more essentially lighthearted, playful state of being within connections. Another tension between this is what I highlighted earlier, that tension between where it is that you come from and how that could have shaped who it is that you are drawn to that could feel accentuated within the latter portion of the year, but definitely a time to be mindful as it relates to essentially legal disputes. Definitely not a time that I would force a move if possible. Renovation projects can feel like they take forever. You can find that you select the wrong contractor or something of that nature at that time with Saturn transit in fourth house. Some of you could be putting in the effort, right, to improve your home, but I will say that could be a transit in which it's excessive or full of waste or not selecting the right person or something of the nature, things could take longer. And so your ruler is cruising direct pretty much all year until October is when it stations retrograde. So again, you are moving forward. So Sagittarius, a year is a long time. So I am not able to get to every single transit, but those are the major ones I want you to know. I'm gonna touch on a couple more themes just to have within your mind's awareness as you navigate this year to tune into what will essentially come to the surface. And then we'll break down essentially where every planet is and how you can be feeling its vibrations within your world. The first theme that I want you to be intentional about chiseling is this energy around prioritizing your inner child. <laughs> and I highlight this with Saturn trans in fourth house. Sometimes there can be this isolating feeling around feeling like your emotional center is a little bit more cynical or a little bit more somber, right? And sometimes this energy of joy and carefree and levity, sometimes that's something easy to tap into. I mean, you guys are so fun. Typically that is quite easy to tap into, but I do see this year, it might be a little bit more of a conscious effort that you are making to really protect that carefree side 
side of your being. And again, with Saturn transiting this sector, I see this energy around you really being this fortress of protecting yourself is really what I see. You're protecting your emotions. You're protecting your heart. Again, you're not closing off your heart, but you're being protective of your emotional state. You're honoring your yeses. You're honoring your noes because the thing is when we say yes, but we mean no, like that is self-betrayal, right? And I see this year, you're really honoring your yeses and your noes. You're honoring your boundaries around, I cannot be in this environment. It's too hard on my emotional state. I cannot keep living here. It's too detrimental to my overall mental health. Like you are really becoming this fortress to protect your own spirit, your own soul. You're being fierce about protecting that and you're protecting that lighthearted, joyful part of your being. Again, there can be shades around feeling a little bit more cynical and jaded, but what I see with North Node and Chiron transiting the fifth house, fifth house is about fun, it's about play, it's about self-expression. Like some of you are having that fortress around saying no to that social obligation that you really don't wanna to go to in order to stay home and finger paint. Like that's the vibe, like you are protecting what just makes you feel alive. You are having no time this year to be in any environment, even for a second where you are not enjoying yourself. Like you're being fierce about protecting your happiness and you're being fierce about protecting your inner child, especially if your inner child did not feel protected. Like you are really stepping up and to a certain degree, reparenting yourself, remothering yourself. Like you are really protecting that lighthearted part of yourself so that you have the ability to thrive. And honestly, with the energy of North Node transit in fifth house, you can be taking more risks in your art. You can be prioritizing your creativity more. You could be less concerned about social norms or what's expected or what events you should go to, you're really wanting to enjoy yourself. You're really wanting to create art that feels good, that feels authentic to who it is that you are. And just a heads up when it comes to nodal transits, like where the North Node is transiting, which is most likely in your fifth house and South Node, most likely in your 11th house, you'll definitely feel that influence kick up around the eclipses, which are as follows. We have the lunar eclipse in Libra on March 25th. We have the solar eclipse in Aries on April 8th. We have the lunar eclipse in Pisces, September 17th. That one's a little bit more important for you to know. We'll talk about that in a moment. And the solar eclipse in Libra on October 2nd. So all of the eclipses in Aries and Libra will be accentuating how it is that you express yourself, how it is that you create versus how other people create. Like this is really a year that you are less concerned around fitting in. You're less concerned about being seen anywhere for any sort of social graces. Like I said, a lot of your life school is in connection, so it's not a hermit year necessarily, but if there are certain friendships that have outlived their purpose, if it's just for appearances, you're really not wanting to be anywhere, even for a second, if you're not having fun, really, honestly, is the vibe. And that will be accentuated with all of the eclipses in Aries and Libra. Now you'll notice the outlier on September 17th was that lunar eclipse in Pisces. So North Node does not enter Pisces, South Node does not enter Virgo until 2026. I wanna let you know as a fellow mutable, that will be a more important nodal cycle for you, okay? North Node does not officially enter, but we're kind of getting a harbinger foreshadow energy with that eclipse in September. It lands at 25 degrees Pisces. So particularly if you have later degree Sagittarius placements, you will definitely feel this influence kick up. And for that eclipse, certain family tension or home tension can reach an apex. There can be a need to set boundaries when it relates to Neptunian energy, which can be essentially substances, escapism, things of that nature. So when it comes to that eclipse, definitely just observing what comes up as that can be important in your 2026. Another theme I see is putting in the effort to improve your life. Like I said, there can be certain tendencies to run from it, to escape from it. And again, the lunar eclipse is on Neptune, so that could be accentuating it also. But there is an opportunity in 2024 to put in the work to improve your life. Like maybe you are someone who's sensitive where you're always like, well, I'm just so sensitive, that's just how I am. With Saturn in the fourth house, you might be like literally learning tools in order to regulate and help your emotions to a certain degree. Maybe there's been an energy around, I can't help the way that I am because of where it is that I come from 
from. I want to just share here like where you come from, what has happened to you, what people have done to you is not your fault, but how you proceed moving forward is your responsibility. And this is the year where you're taking responsibility around improving your life. We also see with your ruler transiting the sixth house, meeting up with Uranus, you're open to change in order to improve your day to day. Some of you could be facilitating a new daily routine that helps every aspect of your wellness, your physical wellness, your emotional wellness, your spiritual wellness, you're prioritizing all of them. And like I said, this can be a year for love or faded business partners coming in, dream clients coming in, like really pay attention to who comes in your universe this year, okay? Because I do see that a lot of them can be helping your soul's growth. And really when it comes to this romantic energy baked into your astrology, the North Node in Aries in the fifth house also highlights that because North Node in Aries is obviously very passionate. It's about following our instincts and fifth house is the house of essentially romance and dating and flirting. So there's an opportunity in 2024 to either ignite energy within your connection. Let's say if things have felt stale within your relationship with Jupiter and Gemini transiting the seventh, this is a time to get curious about your partner, get to know your partner again. And with North Node in Aries in the fifth house, ignite that fun, playful, competitive banter sort of spirit within your relationship. And now if you are open to love, there's a huge emphasis around getting back out there, socializing, learning about yourself through the context of having fun on dates. Again, it's not about loading up your social calendar because you have to be seen all these places. You're really embodied this year is what I feel just with the energy of your ruler transiting Taurus, which again has to do with our physical body and then North Node and Aries in the fifth house. Like listen to your body. If it's like you get a date invitation, it's like, oh, that sounds interesting versus you get a date invitation and your stomach sinks. Like listen to your body and your instincts around where your hell yes is and where your hell no is. And a lot of you are just like having fun in the process of getting to know yourself, getting to know others. So those are some major themes that my Sagittarians are moving through. Let's go ahead and do rapid fire where every outer planet, if I didn't get to it, is transiting and the opportunities that is presenting. So in the first portion of the year, Jupiter will transit Taurus in your sixth house, which is your opportunity to bougify your life and your day to day to invest your energy towards feeling your best, to take charge of your daily routine, to ensure that your daily routine is an accurate reflection of what it is that you value. In the latter portion of the year, it's an opportunity to invest energy in communication within one-to-one -one relationships. It's a time to ignite that curiosity within your existing relationships, as well as being open to getting to know about other people, as well as yourself through networking and putting yourself out there. Saturn will transit the fourth house asking for the solidifying around what it is that makes you happy and what it is that you will and will not accept as it relates to your physical home as well as as it relates to your own emotional self. With North Node trains in the fifth house, it's the time to be creative, to have fun, to prioritize your inner child healing, especially with Chiron there as well. With Uranus transiting the sixth house, again, there can be ups and downs as it relates to career. There can be ups and downs as it relates to health, but continue to hold that vision around miracles occurring around where is it you are craving change in this arena. With Neptune trains in the fourth house, like I said, a lot of you are having boundaries with family, okay, with Neptune in the fourth house. Maybe it's been an arena of your life that you've been seeing with rose color glasses and particularly with that lunar eclipse in September, there can be an accentuating energy around really striving to see the individuals within your family, within your home, really wanting to see them clearly and taking those rose color glasses off. Pluto will essentially dip from Capricorn to Aquarius throughout the year year. And so with Pluto wrapping up its transit in Capricorn, it is essentially wrapping up your journey around the transformation of your own self-worth as well as your finances and what it is that you value. Again, being open to reinventing what it is that you value this year. I do see a shift happening there as well, especially with your ruling planet transiting Taurus in the first portion of the year, which answers to Venus, which is the planet of value. So being open to transformations of what it is that you value about your day, about yourself as you evolve, your value system will as well. And then with Pluto entering Aquarius for good this year, this starts and initiates a 
journey around transformation and empowerment of your mental space. So like I said, with Saturn trans in the fourth, Pluto in the third, really striving to see these mental patterns or emotional patterns clearly can help you lead to empowerment. So in closing, I've prepared some celestial soul-centered affirmations that you are welcome to take on to support you as you navigate this year. I went ahead and created a PDF. I'll link it in the description below where you can save it either to have on your desktop to reference when you're observing that some of these transits are feeling a little challenging, or you could even print it to put it on your desk or somewhere where you see it. If you're not familiar with working with affirmations, it's essentially just sentences that you are meant to really tap into and feel as you say or as you repeat within your mind's eye and they're all essentially written or communicated to call in the highest vibration of the transits that you are experiencing within the year 2024. So the soul-centered affirmations for Sagittarius in year 2024 are as follows. I invest in myself. My health is my wealth. I honor my yes and I honor my no. I get clear on my emotions and on my emotional patterns. It is safe for me to have fun. It is safe for me to express myself. I learn about myself the more I interact with others. Other people have different perspectives than I and thus I can learn different lessons as I interact with them. I am open to life. I take time to have fun. I am intentional about caring for every aspect of my wellness, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual. I get clear on how my past may affect my future. I am intentional about curating a sanctuary that supports my soul. I walk in my daily reality hand in hand with spirit. I honor my solitude as a way to commune with the divine. I feel my emotions rather than run from them. So I hope those affirmations as well as this video overall has been helpful. Doing this series is truly a heart offering from my heart to yours to just thank my audience for such an amazing 2020 Three, I cannot believe that we're almost to 30K subscribers. It's so wild. My goal, I have it written on my whiteboard right there. My goal this year was to hit 20K. So to have surpassed that by nearly 10,000 individuals, I just feel so grateful. So I really wanted to give as close as possible a personal reading to every single person who watches my channel. Again, you kind of have to splice the different signs, but hopefully it helps you tune into some of the themes that that could be coming up within your universe and it's really just from my heart to yours just to thank you for being here for being a part of this journey i feel so grateful to do what it is that i do to connect further my instagram handle is at Haley comet astrology my tiktok is the same and until we meet again drink lots of water and stay cosmic <laughs>